Fighting Game Theater. Oh, hello there. <laughs> hello there, Mr. Matthew. Um, how are you doing this fine tonight? You know what, Matt? I was having such a wonderful, carefully planned day that I looked right. at my schedule when everything's gone perfect. The sun is shining. The roadworks have been done. All that needs to finish off. The metaphorical cherry on top of this cupcake is watching a crap film with Matt McMuscles off of the YouTubes. So th this will be the third time and it will be the third and roughest time, I feel. We've gotten together twice for King of Fighters, Tekken, and I think we both had a lovely time because those movies are wobbly. They're uneven. But but uh, today's subject, um, Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li, I was like, yeah, this will be a laugh. And then I watched the movie for, for this video and I was like, this is less of a laugh as I remember it being. <laughs> I hope Matthew will be okay. Are you okay, sir, after having uh, experiences? I'm assuming this is like the second time you've seen this. Well, you said it best. This is the third time we met. And of course, you know, the third... I didn't know what to expect. It was, in fact, the first time I'd seen this film because <gasps> the, the other films we were talking about coming around the same time, I don't know what was in the water that people were drinking at this period that made people go, mm. hey, I just saw a really crap fighting game film. Yeah, what's your point? We should make one of those that hit around this period because it sounded like there were so many of them that all looked very similar. So I don't know why this was because usually people copy success stories and everyone was <laughs> copying failure stories, which is a, a rare thing to do. But this is video gaming, so it does happen, I guess. So yes, I would not have watched it if I hadn't been for your playful prodding, your weak jabs. I, I think it was like, hey, this didn't work in the 90s. Let's try it again. Aha, but Matt, isn't that a common misconception that Street Fighter movie was in fact profitable? It it was profitable, but I think, especially in the 90s, I kind of feel that like they almost took reviews more seriously. Like, oh, they got really bad reviews though. Uh, so maybe we should just, we, we should like, that's embarrassing. We shouldn't continue. But in the 2000s, if something was successful, they'd be like, we'll make more. Uh, movies were almost getting cheaper to make because the, the advent of like cheap, crappy, digital effects where Tekken, Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li and uh, King of Fighters uh, all came out and were all bombs and all failed critically. I, I think it's like one of us has to hit. Right. Hey, how, how about we copy those guys down the street on the wrong side of Townsville, but we use that properly. That was successful. And on paper, it makes, well, no sense whatsoever, I should say. And uh, no. I didn't practice even less. So I so, am thrilled that you are here to hold my hand and tell me what to do with your, <laughs> my, my very own arcade how to play. Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li being directed by this man, whose name I cannot pronounce, uh, who exploded on the scene with Romeo Must Die, which oh. was a seminal 2000s retelling, gritty retelling of Romeo and Juliet with Jet Li and DMX and Aaliyah in the in the title roles and then this man followed that up with exit wounds <gasps> with steven seagal and then the third strike is what counts because he finished that off with cradle to the grave with jet Li and dmx more again but more importantly than all that matthew uh this man whose name i cannot pronounce and will not try is on the screen right now in case you're wondering uh, he was the cinematographer of the 1988 adaptation of Metal Gear Solid, uh, the movie called Twins, with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You stole everything from me. Only your death can satisfy me. <laughs> So <laughs> I wonder where that was going. <laughs> now, when you then tell Capcom and Hyde Park Entertainment that this is also the man that that directed 2005's Rock the Dwayne Johnson Vehicle Doom, maybe, oh, you're kidding. maybe you know I'm not. You maybe should have rethought after that point. That was his last film before he went on to helm Street Fighter: The Legend of of Chun Li. Um, and, you know, coincidentally... <laughs> to coincidentally, sink Street Fighter, Legend of Chun Li. <laughs> after this movie, um, he took a mandated break 
from making anything. And he didn't <laughs> resurface until 2017 with a movie called Maximum Impact, which I've never heard of, but I'm sad it's not based on the 3D King of Fighters games because of that subtitle. In terms of this movie's production, there's not really that much to say. I've uh, dabbled with trying to do a what happened about this, but apparently it went textbook. <laughs> Nothing really went wrong. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme supposedly uh, was offered the role of Guile, but turned it down, even though Guile doesn't appear in the film at all. I guess he could have actually been the the Charlie Nash role, and then they, they switched that to be Nash later on. But I mean, considering every single other character was recast and is more younger and more relevant... I, I kind of doubt JCVD was actually offered it at all. He probably just wanted to dunk on this production and say, no, these son of a bitches didn't, you know, put me in there. So that's, that's what, do you think he was offered that role? Or do you think he was just telling Porky Pies? I like to think they approached him in the same way that Magneto and Xavier approached Wolverine in first class. <laughs> And of course, he should have uh, said in interviews. He says, well, I'd already told them I was going to kick the next Bison's wannabes ass so hard. So they went, well, <laughs> here he is in the film, so we're going to include him. I think, I believe, uh, Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li is, is, holds a record because it has a strong, honking 3% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I, which I believe is the lowest of any fighting game video game movie, I think. I'm not sure if there's something lower than that. I, the ones I did look at, perhaps Tekken 2, The Revenge of Kazuya is lower oh. than that. But I don't even think it has a rating. So um, I, That's one of those 3% it goes that far down. That's like a yeah. review an independent video game magazine would give to a game that they didn't like. Uh, we kick off this film with an awesome Capcom logo that was never oh. used for any movie again. Don't you get such a nostalgia like, oh, this is going to be awesome, Blast, when you see this thing? I do. I still hear and see the intro, even in the videos where it's, what happened to this completely <laughs> awful Capcom game? I still see the logo and hear the audio go, oh, this game rules. It's got like, it's got like a uh, Ghosts and Goblins music and ends with like a Ryu, like Hadouken. I'm like, oh, it's so cool. You just wish that, you know, this partnership, whatever Capcom struck up, like continued and they could have put their logos in more things like marvel or dc movies but yeah uh not not to be but before that map and muscles i was too mm -hmm. distracted by the capcom thing you were lovingly talking about because after the inexplicable appearance of the 20th century fox intro which just seems wrong for a film of this low caliber right. hyde park entertainment logo shows up hyde park that's the name of the company their text hyde park appears over a 3d model of tower bridge in London, which is not in Hyde Park, London. <laughs> it's a very different bridge. It's the Serpentine Bridge is the one that's in Hyde Park. And that is not the one shown there. I have absolutely nothing down for Hyde Park. Like I got nothing on them. So I'm very, very happy you were able to pull something. I would never even, obviously I wouldn't know. I have not, I have not been to, to the said city of London, but that's awesome. That's awesome that they, they cared that little with their own logo. Yeah, that's probably been used in lots of other productions. And of course, the first thing we see when the film starts properly, what is it? The Golden Gate Bridge. So I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark and assume this film stars in Ohio. <laughs> Yeah, I see be, how you I fuckers be, like it. I, the actress that plays uh, Chun Li, uh, Lara Lane here, Kristen Crook, is her narration the worst narration of all time? It's some of the least enthusiastic I've ever heard to start a film. But it's also super enthusiastic sometimes. Like she's talking about dead parents, and she's like loving it. She's loving life. She's probably happiest in the film when she's talking about her dead parents. I don't. I don't know what this is. But what I found. Why? I wasn't prepared for. Everywhere I looked, there was crime without punishment. I wanted to do something. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, right, the the emotions are in the, the wrong bit. It's like a Jeff Hardy promo. So, <laughs> as you said there, the emotions are wrong. It was hard living next to the Golden Gate Bridge. The noise of cars kept me up at night, even though we only filmed there for an hour. So <laughs> my parents are dead. My, my, my dad, I love my dad. All of her narration is only about her dad. It's like they looked at the Capcom call sheet for characters. It says Chun Li getting revenge for her dad. Doesn't care about mom. It says on the, the script show and tell. Both. 
the Street Fighter 4 logo then appears after her narration. It just got the 4 chopped off and in like what papyrus font it says <laughs> Legend of Chun-Li next to it. You see that that gross Street Fighter 4 logo. I'm a big stickler for logos and like out of out of a lot of them that one just like looks like it's not quite done yet. I, I don't know. It just looks like kind of sloppy and I, I then saw the credits list. They have uh, executive produced by KJ Mighty Number no. Nine in a Fune, which was oh, a blast no. to see. This was him aiming at the West, but instead of games, it was a nuclear missile. Little Chun Li plays piano. Chun Li is a tiny pianist. Something as a wrestling podcaster, I could, of course, relate to. <laughs> Life uh, changes. The room shots, and then yes, the opening title on a scroll. With no segue. It's like, I like it when the, the old style of having like a pretty cool film, an intro and the title theme, like uh, Speed or I don't know, yeah. Psycho, the uh, Panic Room or whatever like that. And it gets you side. But I guess they didn't have the budget or the vision for that. So it's just to start the film as, hi, I'm Chun-Li and I'm in this film, Street Fighter starring Chun-Li. <laughs> You're like, why did you even bother? Uh, speaking of uh, no creativity, the action kicks off with a CG arrow being shot through a window and aimed at uh, Chun Li Dad Head. Uh, Balrog <laughs> instantly walks through the window. Like, what, a second <laughs> after this arrow gets shot through? Like, just, I, I, I'm giving up on the arrows now. And Chun Li Dad, his first thought is to throw a can of peaches. Yes, what you said does happen. But I was so <laughs> distracted by the fact that we get shown outside the big house that I can almost guarantee has been used to shoot porn on. Balrog then charges through the window in a a really crappy green screen kind of way because glass is expensive ask a game changer wrestling and it's so weird because it is after i rub my eyes in disbelief the michael clark duncan aka the kingpin yes the academy award nominated mcd acting is so weird duncan was nominated for his role in the green mile the same year he appeared as quote gay virgin in the underground comedy movie. Underground comedy movie? I'd never heard of it before I was checking it. And it's as the same year he did the role as, I quote, gay virgin. As it's listed <laughs> on IMDb. He was nominated for Academy Award. And here he is in Street Fighter, the movie in brackets. No, not that one. I love Duncan, so I'm happy to see him even in this film where Chun-Li's dad yells, Balrog, with all the enthusiasm of Ike's I fight for my friends line from Smash Bros. So when when the, when this attempt on Chun Li Dad's life uh, uh, fails, he decides to jump the kitchen island and attacks Balrog with a kick. And when that fails, he jumps over the island again and attacks Balrog <laughs> with a kick. And Balrog then transports us back to the 1950s via an airplane spin. Uh, <laughs> hallowed antiquity. <laughs> I just saw them do this. They're like, what, in what way will this be an intimidating move? Like, I'll make you a little bit dizzy. And me, myself, as well. I will also, you know, make sure that it's, it's an even playing field. And then just tosses them into, like, a cabinet or something. And the, the shocking thing about this is that when you, when you watch something like this, and this happened with uh, Tekken or King of Fighters, where it's like, this is all bad, but, you know, that bit of the fight was good or that thing was kind of creative and this is your first fight this you want to wow people that are at least going all oh, this is going to be terrible but at least I'll, I'll, I'll see some fights no we have we have repeated botched jumps over over a kitchen island we have throwing peach cans and and we have airplane spin so so it's not off to a good start and even worse he's a boxer he's throwing cans at them and he's like yeah. what do you mean i'm no tomato can <laughs> a tomato can. He's American because they're in Ohio because of Golden Gate Bridge. Um, so you think it's set up for that, but it's not. It's just, yeah, you can lob these at them. We found them outside the house for free, so they're a prop now. And you're right, I liked when he used an airplane spin. Barrow gets put over in a variety of table offense, and then we get everyone's favorite staple of these type of martial arts films. Generic henchmen show up, yeah, and they're not even yeah. wearing masks. Come on, Street Fighter. Are you trying to, to convince us you're better than King of Fighters? Uh, oh, oh, never mind. Um... After using his fire abilities and a bottle of water to subdue the goons, hired goons, 
Chun Li shows up and Balrog holds her hostage until dun dun dun. Let's see if I get this name right. Please correct me. Neil McDonough. I believe so. What are you doing here? No, really. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing here? I thought this guy was destined for greatness after Band of Brothers. I was going to say, what are you doing in here from your Oscar winning role as the cop that hates Tom Cruise in Minority Report? Oh, that is him as well. Yeah. Uh, and Dum Dum Duggan in Captain America. That guy's name mm-hmm. again is Dum Dum Duggan. Uh, yeah. That soldier scene in Sonic the Hedgehog where he appears for two minutes. <laughs> Not sure what that was. That's true too. And apparently being William Birkin in Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Oh yeah. Like I watched that but I don't remember that. I didn't watch so... it. I read the reviews and I'm like oh, I'm, I'm good skipping this. Uh, yeah, no, I always like right. this actor not just because of Band of Brothers because he's so fucked up looking. He's like if you acid washed Anthony Starr. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. And the stuff I've seen him in, he's good. And here, he's attempting Irish. I, I, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if he is, like, from Ireland. I, I want to say They do say later no. on say that he was a, a Irish refugee, and that's his ancestry. Uh, <laughs> I sa- I've actually typed up because I didn't realize that bit was coming up. And I said, I hope this leads to an expla- explanation about bison jumping from body to body and he keeps on having <laughs> accent issues it's not just Neil Sick. deciding to tell this guy how's the form Chun Li's dad <laughs> have you seen the latest OSW review I, I fucking love say. those racist Irish men <laughs> Bison then ushers Chun Li dad into his cars, and he doesn't even bother taking Chun Li mom with them. Just leaves her on the side of the road, and then preteen Chunners just has the most vicious staring contest of all time with Bison through a window. Just multiple shots cutting back to them, just staring at each other. And Bison not thinking, maybe I should probably kill her too, because she might be a problem later on we then get a black and white cutscene of chun li being shown a necklace her dad gave her to remind you that she loves her dad because we may need reminding because we haven't seen much of it outside of piano and the porn house that they live in <laughs> i have written down sepia filter shows up eight minutes into a film <laughs> how we just saw this it was a long time ago mama muscles it had to be like 91 <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and this necklace dictates her entire move set as it's the spinning bird. So she's like, well, I got it. Yeah, this is going to be important later, this this MacGuffin. I mean, well, it's not really. like It's a MacGuffin to her. Nobody else wants it. It's not important to yeah. the story, but... She, she misunderstands the point of this, and she goes to M. Bison and just goes, caca, in his face. <laughs> And he's like, that's annoying. And then he falls off a bridge. Yeah, he's so distracted. He goes, whoa, what the hell? (laughs) He actually kills him. He's just like, fantastic. I didn't learn the lesson, but I would anyway. So then we have a a time jump. Uh, Chun-Li is now a, a concert pianist. And she plays in front of the biggest, bestest CGI auditoriums that money can can afford. And then after that, she is handed said mysterious ancient scroll, which I assume is inviting her to participate in Mortal Kombat. That's right, but the scroll is uh, filled with text we can't read. So it's like Mm -hmm. playing Dead Rising, the first one on a CRT TV. Nice reference. Fuck you, Capcom. (laughs) This is our first look at adult Mm Chun-Li, known from now on as normal Chun-Li. Uh, it's a Kristen Kruk. Am I getting that right? I think so. Yes. Chun Li uh, has a tender moment with Chun Li mom, and who is the exact same age as Chun Li. Apparently, they just CG gray scaled her skin down to appear sick. It's the laziest thing I've ever seen. Could you not have gotten an old, older actress for this? Could you not? <laughs> yeah, literally no. Chun Li then sees a, chi- a sick woman who asks Chun Li to win the big baseball game for her. <laughs> Win one for the chunner. And this is this woman's first speaking part in this film. And it's just, no, she's dead. I don't even know why you needed um, the mom in the first place. You could have started it off with, my mom died when I was, you know, absolutely useless to include her here at all. Because it makes it worse, her inclusion. Her dad being all that she had makes it... The, the, the video game story is fine. It's good the way it is. Like, her mom's not even mentioned 
like in Chun Li's backstories for like Street Fighter games, it's just you have to assume she died long ago, so all she has left is her dad. But in here, all she has left is her mom. But then she's not even trying to get revenge for her mom because would she get revenge on cancer? Like, good for you, but that's not gonna make for a very thrilling yeah. narrative. Yeah, like she doesn't even know you're what right. happened. Especially to her as dad. it's so weird, like the decision to have that because they never had a scene where Bison showed up and was like, oh, whatever, punch, and then it's left to die. And so we get the storyline instead of it being Bison took everything from me, so mm-hmm. I, I was forced to go to Bangkok and abandon everything I knew to become Chun-Li, which would have made sense. It's, well, they took my dad. Uh, my mom got better like like an hour later and I lived in a rich house. <laughs> I was forced to become a famous pianist. Oh, then I decided to get revenge on my dad. <laughs> it, it's, it's, I didn't want to get my, my dad being taken away, distracted from my pianist skills. <laughs> So we, we cut to then Bison holding court as he presides over his criminal network, Shadow Liao. Oh, thank you for pointing this out. God. Shadow, like, all right, the animated movie back in 94, I'm going to, I'm going to like, that's a freebie. You can get one wrong. That was Shadow Law. And even then, I think that was just a mistranslation. Like it wasn't them purposely trying to mispronounce something. The Van Damme movie got it correct, at least to me, it's Shadow Lu. Mm-hmm. And I think in every subsequent anime and TV show or what a cartoon, Shadow Lu. And this is the movie where Capcom had more creative control. Shadow Liao. They <laughs> constantly say it. I, I Maybe this is like some sort of really precise, really accurate translation to the original Japanese. I don't, I don't think it is. I'm sure people will let me know in the comments if they are. That's not the only mispronunciation we're going to see. And I'm an expert on mispronouncing things. It, we then see the bison in a very frank straightforward manner tells all of his partners i'm going into business for myself and decides to consolidate all their empires somehow under his own rule and the other criminals don't like this they're like nah and they all leave and bison just stands there for a super long amount of time i like him in his secret shadow base with the legion of doom a.k.a. a bunch of foreigners from the world because we're unironically doing Austin Powers bits now. And I did like that they threaten him in their native tongues, but he knows all the languages. Sadly, we yeah. don't get a bit where he just starts speaking cocky Irish. I'm not dealing with you anymore, Bison. <laughs> and he's just... <laughs> Hush your mouth. Uh, so, Bison is young, hung, and skilled with his tongue. The lads aren't impressed and immediately leave because they're bald, bean, and full of mean. Uh, Bison keeps drinking and eating while yeah. Vega shows up to kill them oh. all. Sorry, do you mean Vega or do you mean just an NWO member that just wears black all the time? Because because Vega wears black, Balrog wears black. We're just all NWO B team. This is the other thing that gets me about two thousands movies, is, is they go they go well. We can't have you know Vega with a cool snake tat- tattoo and yellow and purple pants and. And we can't have that. And I would say, but what if you can? Just have him walk out in his original costume. Everyone, it would be weird and totally different to everything else in the film. We just have one or two characters have their exact video game outfits. I, they would be a thousand times more memorable than everyone just wearing black jumpsuits, you know? Yeah, it's it's that weird thing of like, well, we want to adapt this thing, but <laughs> yeah, we're not going to make them look like how they do in the thing. Don't be daft. That'd be silly. But, they, they, but remember how in the Van Damme movie they found ways to get them into their costumes it was like oh ryu and ken are wearing suits the entire time but then bison's like oh i got you our training outfits they just happen to be red and and white like karate geese yeah i was like huh and then uh like uh i think it's uh e honda is fighting and like his shirt just shreds off and it's all like tattered around the waist and it kind of looks like he's a sumo wrestler now. They've had all these little cute, oh, Bison has a fetish for little Chinese outfits. So he puts Chun-Li in a little fetish outfit. Yeah, you're right. There's reasons for that. Uh, Zangief goes, look, here's a white gi for you and a red gi for Ken. So I can tell mm-hmm. you two apart when we pull Street Fighter <laughs> 1. Say, so, all right, all right, cheers. There's reasons for it. You're right. I think we said this last time we've met up and maybe every other video review, but Watching these worst films does make you appreciate Street Fighter the movie. It hasn't gotten better. There's just so many much worse films. It's improved without doing anything. Yeah, they're propping it up a little bit. This, the, all these 2000s uh, versions of this. It's not making it better, but like it's making you realize it could be way worse. Right, like, if these guys did Silent Hill 2, Pyramid Head would show up with, like, a Pyramid Head tattoo and go, Yo, I'm Pyramid Head, bitch. 
I'll say though, this wasn't a bad scene, to be honest no, with you. It with, wasn't. The, with the script, obviously, you could see what they were going for. Could be better done in terms of like if it was a proper film, but but a film of this standard, this was actually all right because you could hear that. Ah! Well, M. Bison is just like, Neil McDonough is Geese Howard, is M. Bison. It's so much more geese. It's He plays a way better geese, even looks creepy like geese, Mm. you know? Yeah, and this ends with Balrog handing Bison a note. Sadly, he's not wearing his boxing gloves the entire time, like in the Street Fighter 2 cartoon. Uh, We are now introduced to uh, Kevin Nash. Uh, Nash here... (laughs) Chris Klein. Well, Nash could talk. Chris Klein cannot. I think he was in what? The American Pie movies? What is Chris Klein yes. famous for? Uh, the American Pie movies, but not okay, all of it. them. I put here Chris Klein, aka the Baron Corbin of American Pie, is here to look bored, senseless, and perv on Mayor Sonny. He's Nash, <laughs> and he's into gash. He talks like he's in a Max Payne cutscene. <laughs> All the time. The gra- the growl and cadence, but still you can't take him seriously. Like, he's always, like, he's, like, trying to chew up the scenery, but he can't actually get a bite. You know what I mean? Like, it's failing. Max Payne, minimum effort. Chris Klein, <laughs> available for bookings. So he shows up. Uh, Moon Bloodgood is here as well because uh, they found all of the disposed heads of all the crime boss families uh, from the previous scene. Um, and and his line delivery here of, you've inherited a big problem, is almost like quotable. Call me Nash. You just inherited a big problem. Those bodies piled up in the harbor. They were the heads of the ruling crime families of Bangkok, correct? The Bangkok, correct? The Bangkok, correct? The Bangkok, the Bangkok, uh-huh. The Bangkok, Nash. Um, our big reveal is that Chun Li Dad is actually still alive. <gasps> this is odd to me. He's being kind of kept as a prisoner so he can do something for Bison. He has contacts. And what is he actually being kept to do? Do you know? This feels like almost when they did a when they do biopics, like they did Goodfellas. Uh, mm-hmm. People point out that the person responsible for writing Goodfellas, who's portrayed by Ray Liotta in the film. In the film version, not a lot of killing or really, really bad things happening by the guy who wrote this uh, to make himself look good as possible. As people huh. point out Goodfellas going, ah, oh, that's, that's that's funny. I, uh, that's how you remember that happening. Oh, okay, fair enough. And it's almost like they're doing with Chun-Li is doing a biopic about her dad. So M. Bice is using the contacts that he has to be evil, but it's okay for Chun-Li's dad to have them. Hang on. Is the implication that he's in some sort of organized crime thing here? I think it's because he knows politicians. So he, he uh-huh. has politicians uh, uh, contact info. The, he's, he's, he's in their Twitter circle. Oh, so that's what they... Yeah. Oh, so if someone who... The rest of likes Botchmania is a friend of Mafu. I do an evil Uno. Someone who's <laughs> definitely not part of a dodgy crime syndicate. Oh, oh you know him. He's a friend of Chun-Li's dad. Because that's, that's his name in the circuit, Chun-Li's dad. All they ever say is that he was a successful businessman. My, my uh-huh. father was an important businessman. But they never say making what? Fabric? Bras? What does what he do? Is he a real estate agent? What act- No, he's a businessman. Well, that means he's a criminal then. Yes. You know, I'm just <laughs> defaulting to that. Well, I can't believe Bison would steal from a criminal. That's just shocking behavior from Shadow. <laughs> we're, we're, we're then told that Bison uh, has a family or loved ones. There's a little hint of that. So mm-hmm. we're supposed to maybe try to kind of think about possibly empathizing with him. It, look, Bison is... Should he ever be a nuanced character? No. His name is Bison. He has psycho power. You don't need tragic backstory to to be an entertaining character. You just either need to be super evil or you need to be Raul Julia. Again, the Street Fighter movie did this very simple. It's very, 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 very similar to the Night 94 film with Bison holding Dalsim hostage as I guess they looked and went, what the fuck we do with a dude who does yoga? Yeah, exactly. All right, like, he's, he's a scientist now. All right, yeah. Get the guy who's in Gandhi. Yeah, he's in Street Fighter movie now. I'm firing his agent. Yeah, great. So uh, <laughs> we, we, were, we were shown uh, Chun-Li mom one more time. She is very quickly written out of the story. Uh, her, her health bar gets depleted. So Chunners is free to revolve her entire life about chasing down whoever gave her the Mortal Kombat scroll. At this moment, she has no direction other than, huh, this scroll is interesting. She's not trying to avenge her mom. She thinks her dad is dead. 
what if she didn't decide to do that? What what if she's like, I'm just going to continue with with my peony, you know? <laughs> like, peony. Th- there's no there was no intrigue put into the scroll other than she doesn't understand the scroll. Yeah, That's it's it. more like, well, uh, pfft, achieved everything else in life. Um, yeah, I think I'll go to Bangkok. Yeah, so she goes to Bangkok, just ri- Bangkok, you know, a, a city of millions. She just f- happens to find the vendor who can tell her what the next part of Shenmue she needs to get to. So, oh, no, wait, she 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 doesn't even go to Bangkok yet. Someone tells her to go to, ba- the vendor tells her to go to Bangkok. And she's like, okay, find someone named Gen. She sure. says, Gen, I have fusion and retro arch. Won't that be enough? <laughs> She went to Chinatown, yeah, Matt, or as the Chinese call it, town. Town. <laughs> Look at it like, is this Chinatown? They're like, what did you just say? Oh, another, another, <laughs> pretending to say that. Never she mind. goes to Bangkok, which of course is Johnny Cage's trademark move. Ah, very nice. I don't know why I bothered um, writing that. I should have stopped with the get the again joke. Uh, what else happens, Matt? Uh, well, what happens uh, after that is a scene where Nash talks, unfortunately. Oh, um, great. What else happens? He, he, he talks, he gives a spooky promo about bison that includes the line, uh, this guy walks through the raindrops. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Because <laughs> yeah. Chun-Li just Googles him. All she does is Google him later and she finds out everything. I wrote, I wrote down American Pie Hole explains the whole Shadow Man remastered by Night Dive Studios <laughs> thing while managing to overact and underact at the same time. He's got all those bases covered. Tommy Lasso would have loved him. It's a skill, really, for him to overact and underact. Yes, it's a skill that very few can use, which is why he's not working much. Sh- sheltered and privileged Chun Li says goodbye to her army <laughs> of butlers and maids. How relatable. She, oh, she, God, I she, hope this fully grown woman with a successful piano. <laughs> career and butlers just to, right next to the golden gate bridge that's prime real estate and then she's like oh that's not enough a more narration and then chun li says you know what you know what's really hard being homeless <laughs> yeah <laughs> this, this this part of hate she's like i had to become one with the streets and like <laughs> i have to fight for every meal i'm like yeah oh, just don't have her start off being like a like a rich princess. Right, right, right. It says she has to blend in with the people of Bangkok, which is the film's way of saying we're not spending money on anything. Uh, her Bangkok disguise is, of course, wearing clothes. And yes, she went all the way to Bangkok with no one to talk to or to stay at. So now she's homeless and sleeping rough, which seems like very bad planning. Jesus, get a hotel. I, you, or do you just go on the honor system? Oh, I'm not going to use my credit card. I realized quite early on that this character was unrelatable. So now I am poor for no reason. <laughs> exactly. So homeless Chun Li sees a bunch of crime, but doesn't do anything because she wants to keep her disguise of homeless person. <laughs> From another country. No one knows her. Like she stops a fight and everyone goes, holy shit, it's Chun Li's dad's daughter, Chun Li. <laughs> Okay, and then what so, happens, Matt? So we cut to a display of Bison's ideal version of Bangkok, which is sadly not nearly as cool as Bisonopolis. Balrog then tells Bison about something called the White Rose. Intrigue! Right? No Pax Bisonica speech, sadly. Uh, <sighs> but luckily for Bison, Balrog says he knows she's in Bangkok. Well, that narrows it down. So once Chen Li has been homeless enough, she drops a shelf on a bad guy, which then knocks her out as well. She just falls down. Right. I guess she's she's just gassed. Nothing yeah, she, left in the tank. She pulls down the big heavy shelf of stuff and then immediately collapses, bringing to mind Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness. Clearly, so, if she'd pushed a small crate beforehand, she would not have collapsed. I, I was going to say this. There's a big bang of Tomb Raider on this with, with Chun-Li. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. her, her hair is similar. I, they yeah. put schmutz on her face to they make her like a rough and tumble action hero. So, again, finally makes himself known and is played by Robin Shu of Liu Kang fame. And Yay. this is his fourth turn as a video game martial arts character. Four. He also was in Dead or Alive. Oh, God, and- is he in that? Yeah, yeah. It's a very small role, but he's in that. And of course, Mortal Kombat. And of course, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. This guy, this is the real streak right here. 
four times. It's so sad he wasn't in 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 uh, King of Fighters or Tekken. Yeah, you are exactly right. Uh, he's, he works so hard in these things, doesn't he? Bless he, him. He does. Even though I can't dislike him. He's kind of this weird young version of Mr. Miyagi, kind of. Yeah, it's kind uh, of, hi, I'm going to be the person who montages you to victory. And she might as well, you know, Ken is so unnoteworthy yeah. in Street Fighter storylines. They might as well have, she might as well have gone, oh my God, it's you, Robin Shu. Yes, it is I, Robin Shu, as Robin Shu. Gen then explains to, to Chun-Li that her dad is, just has the contacts and that's why Bison's been keeping him alive. And she's like, what? He's alive? When were you going to tell me that? Like, right now, then. Then they do their little training scene, and this is our first. Just put it on the board. She is wearing blue, folks. She is chunking now. Fully she's transformed. In a she's in a blue movie. I mean, something else wrong come from. You're right. <laughs> Again, with a weird accent, tells Chun that he knows where her dad is. That's what you yell in the arcades, isn't it? Where's your daddy? Um, he then <laughs> talks about the group, The Order of the Web. And yeah. again, just the implication, Chun-Li's dad was a, quote, connected businessman. <laughs> just saying. And then we get a fight, don't we, Matt? We do. We get a fight that's, that's again, pretty unmemorable, except for the fact that they, I would say, blew a quarter of the film's budget on its wobbly fireball. I didn't think it's supposed to be a fireball. They're just like, you know, force punch, force wave. And he doesn't even name it. He doesn't even say, like, what this is. Just, like, feel the energy around you. Just just saying all the time. Just saying the exact same shit Katana told him in the... In, in the Katana told right. Liu Kang in the Mortal Kombat movie, you know? Give him all the cheat codes. Yeah, it's gonna be funny because, like, she's already really good at fighting. And he's like, yeah, focus on a mallet and throw fireballs. Just spam. Spam. Pick... <laughs> Pick a cigar up, and just do keep it doing quarter circle forward. You can't lose, honest. And it, it is a cliche to get in every martial arts film, so and it's hard to pick at it. But uh, yeah, all right. right, fight me. Show me what you've got. And then Chun's like, yeah, it's like, ah, you're not ready to fight Bison. But how short and funny would the film be if Chun-Li just battered the fuck out of him? And yeah. Gen's like, wow, I didn't know you were top tier. Just in one <laughs> lie to me. <laughs> Chun-Li's going to learn how to do a fireball, which she can do in the games in fairness. Mm -hmm. But Gen, Gen can't. can't. Yeah, so I thought, wait, what can Gen do? And I had to remind myself by going to one of those, like, all super booths from Gen videos on YouTube. Thank you, people mm -hmm. who make those. And I realized his main attraction, if this film was as accurate to the games, would be he squares off uh, against Bison the very end bit, and then he changes stance, uh -huh. and Bison's like, oh, you wee knacker ye! <laughs> and he again, falls that. off a cliff. <laughs> He does have that one super where a countdown appears on you, and then after like uh, seven seconds, you take a bunch of damage. So you, so it hurries you up. That if you can finish Gen off before the countdown ends, uh, you you can you can win before you take that big shitload of damage. So that's kind of cool. Hard to put that in a film though. Yeah, they've already blown the budget on this crappy fireball, so a, a number above a head. I mean, we're talking tens of dollars here, man. After, after this fireball lesson, Chun-Li then, uh, instead of harnessing the power of her inner inner energy, she harnesses the power of Google. And uh, she finds everything about Bison instantly. This is uh, his, <laughs> his fake lady that works with him. Now she knows this. And this has to be one of the worst fake web pages I've ever seen in a film. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like you, you know like uh, even modern films nowadays if they don't want to pay google fine they'll have moogle you know you right, moogle right. to search blah 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 and i've well, seen I can some find bad a fantasy. ones yeah yeah just uh, just instead of the google logo is just a little moogle face kupo and this is the worst one it's just like it's just like big bad thing happen bison like big money lost <laughs> spend two minutes on this <laughs> N next up we have a bunch of really uninteresting explaining about buying up waterfront real estate and ceos and driving up the market value and when your movie starts putting shit shit like this you're you're done Th like this is the plot what was bison's plan in the van damme movie uh, 20 billion dollars or my mutated man beast is gonna eat a bunch of hostages yeah what's bison's plan here i'm gonna stir up petty crime in a poor section of the city thus driving the property value up even further and then in, in accordance with article 2.34 of the bangkok municipal code i will buy said lunch holy shit i miss bisonopolis 
it, it's all the uninteresting bits from the wire season two put yeah. into film form and it's all because his wife wants a waterfront property which oh, of course yeah, he's a it. bad man for doing because chun li's dad should own them meaning mm-hmm. he's a landlord and bison doesn't seem <laughs> as evil now <laughs> so i'm not i'm not saying i'm pro bison i'm just saying i'm <laughs> Shad- shadaloo <laughs> the cat face doesn't look that bad. Um, uh, Nash and what's her face start doing a stakeout because, of course, a movie like this has a stakeout. And of course, Nash uses this opportunity. There's always like, oh no, they're watching us better kiss each other way longer than you need to. You can cut the sexual tension between these two with a spork. Absolutely. Uh, I put Nash acts in brackets, uh uh-oh, and says the Esperanto Industries, which is also the language they speak at Red Dwarf occasionally, is a front (laughs) for Shadalulu Pencil. And then, yeah, some masked army police dudes show up, in brackets, a regular occurrence in Bangkok, or so I'm told, to shut it down. This bicycle explains he's going to gentrify the fuck out of it. He watches a kid protest him while machine gun is heard, and he stares at it happens because he's so damn evil. Okay, more scenes like this were all right, but if you ignore the fact that it's like, Ha <laughs> ha Waterfront property. Yeah, because in the in, back of your head, that's... In 50 years, it'll be under the sea. Ha 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 Global warming. Another Chun-Li training scene. Uh, again, tells her to feel without using her senses, then proceeds to do a bunch of tests that involve her using her senses. That's a very, very quick scene. Just, you know, it's just leveling her up, I guess. Uh, we go back to Nash and what's her face? B- bunch more. Wait, wait, of- are you missing out the important bit of Chun Li with a blindfold on? Has to avoid all the stuff that Gen is throwing at her, which I would take as a hint to leave, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, she wins the quick time event and <laughs> uh, avoids the blocks and also the buzzsaw, which came out of nowhere. <laughs> this is the buzzsaw. quietest buzzsaw you've ever seen. Like, she only like would he hear throws, them. He, he throws. <laughs> Oh, oh, he turns it on. Damn right he does. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, after that, uh, Nash and Lady have more flirtatious scenes. Uh, but that, of course, leads us to a club scene, a bar scene. And there's always a club slash bar scene. There was one in Tekken. I think there was one in King of Fighters as well, if, if memory serves. I went to the bar during the film, if that counts. They head to Insomnia the bar for a bit of Spyro the Dragon, I guess. So uh, we have the evil CEO lady of, of, of Esperanto who is in Bison's pocket or, you know, it's a front for Shadow. She's very Yow. small. She sees Chunners. Uh, she's wearing blue. And she has her hair buns. She sees her grinding on the dance floor in a scene that was probably expressly made for the trailer. Ooh, yeah, I was gonna say sprinkle. that scene and the, mo- the there's just scene we've just seen with the uh, oh sorry I'm half naked were definitely cut up to make this film look amazing in the trailer. So yeah, this 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 little scene of bumping and grinding on the dance floor. Ooh, possible lesbian pollen? No, it's fighting actually. <laughs> Because we cut to a bathroom fight with, to be fair, pr- you know, a decent work rate, lots of kicks, awkward tugging, jumping, wet clothing, all of the all of the boxes have been checked for this scene. Absolutely. I like that they went to the toilets to fight like proper Geordie women. And then Chun Li smashes through a glass toilet door. Mm-hmm. Why would that be there? You could see people shitting. <laughs> I think in the club they don't mind. Everyone's kind of kind of into it, you know. Chun smashes her daft before can't act her guard uh, starts firing through the door. He could have shot her. You didn't know. He didn't know where she was. But yeah, she uh, Chun Li runs out of the bathroom. Her clothes now dry as a bone. Uh, she does a bunch of flippy whippy shit on the stripper poles, and then that a uh, song starts where the only lyric is "Street Fighter, Street Fighter, Street Fighter." I think there's a yeah somewhere in the middle there. <laughs> Um, Street bl- Fighter, yeah! <laughs> uh, the, sorry, the lyrics were, this is going to look good for the trailer. The trailer. The trailer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it blares on the sound system. It's the only thing you can hear. Uh, and this, this, all of this is culminating in the main event, which is the camera zooming on, in on her spinning bird medallion, which summons said move to happen. I clapped. I clapped when I saw it. I mean, fair Fs for them for doing it, but the frame rate know. slows down so much. Don't slow it down. Don't let us see what's happening, it, actually. It's, it's so funny. Idea. I thought not even Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li gets rollback. <laughs> 
I mean, technically, it's like if you're watching at home, just rewind it like two seconds, maybe. But but still, um, cut to outside. Nash and Lady Woman. They have no idea what they're doing. They're they were literally asleep in the car. You know. Oh, we got to go in. Everyone's leaving because everyone's getting real hyped that they saw the spinning bird kick, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they're like, dude, you should have seen this. They they go in. It's it's way too late to really do anything. They see Chun-Li leave a mysterious lady in blue. A, a, a vigilante uh, apparently is disrupting Bison and she's trying to, I think in Nash's words, make a statement or something. I'm like, no, she no, she didn't. That She was trying to, <laughs> that's not what happened. I know he wasn't technically in the room he didn't see what happened but like his assertion is wrong that's how uh, she was trying to just get information and just leave you know gen then reveals to chun li bison's tragic backstory why don't you take us through gen explains to chun that he grew up with bison even though gen is supposed to be like 100 years old or whatever it's revealed that bison is the son of irish missionaries and i go oh that explains mm. that right i hope they added that in after hearing him speak earlier in the film and went, whatever, no one's paid attention. Bison is now Irish. Anyway, he's a wrong'un who brought his wife to a cave and he wanted to remove his own conscience. A haunted so, cave. A, ha a haunted cave. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Uh, to remove his own conscience, he had to rip out the unborn baby of his wife. Uh, his pregnant wife that probably was a more important thing to yeah, say than yeah. the spooky cave to be fair <laughs> I'm sure you would not need much of a conscience to rip the baby out of your wife in the first place but <laughs> god damn this is a messed up version of Bison but he needed it to like make business deals that's what he needed it for <laughs> he really wanted that oceanfront property no one, no one can buy up oceanfront property if they have a conscience but you don't need it if you need to rip out babies the, the view logic. is worth killing your wife over. I'm telling you, says Bison, to no one in particular. Wait till you see this view. You'll completely understand, says Bison, with a hint of Irish about him. Uh, yes, I was not ready for this scene. No, no What did was. you think of it? it? It comes so out of left field because it's it's so ridiculous and over the top that it's more comical than anything. But they're trying to make it like, oh, look, like uh, how, what a monstrous badass this guy is. But it's just weird. Like, it... it doesn't fit with the rest of this plus bison's not doing anything that's any more evil than 90 percent of all villains in similar films he's having people get killed on his order he's buying up oceanfront property that's it why why did you why did you need this Ha, ha, ha. Uh, the good people of Bangkok will have to travel at least five minutes to see the ocean now. Ah! <laughs> he looked like a bad guy before, but you know now he did this, and you know and he obviously has this piercing eyes because mm -hmm. the actor played by such stunning eyes. You're like he could cut glass with them <laughs> at the yeah. best of times. Obviously, you get the baby blood spatter all over his face, and he's like, ha ha ha! I'm gonna own the fuck out of that house. <laughs> Oh, then Balrog shows up and tells someone to get the RPG. Yeah, the guard yeah. comes back with a copy of Wild Arms. <laughs> Balrog says, I already have those, and flexes at the camera. Sally, that's not what happens. What does happen? Gen, uh, Gen sends Chun-Li away with a random task, and that gives Balrog uh, his chance to use said RPG to then just shoot a missile, and it apparently kills Gen. So in case Chun-Li's tank of Protag fuel was running on empty this makes sure it's topped off apparently gen is dead you know because uh, yeah. he had he had maybe two seconds to get a mile away <laughs> from where the explosion was because it wasn't it was a very bad cg explosion but it was yeah. at least girthy it was it was not like a a piddly little like poof it was yes you're it dead. was a golden eye golden eye 007 n64 explosion it was it looked, it looked bad but it was big you gotta wait like three yeah. minutes for all the fire to dissipate then you're good yeah. you know i liked also that the dude giving the rpg to balrog says but our men are already in there and balrog sally does not yell remember the alamo <laughs> <laughs> chun li is sad because she has to make her own food again so we are then introduced formally uh to vega who is inexplicably played by the black eyed peas taboo and he he is he is instructed to fight chun li and finds her somewhere in bangkok within five minutes of the last scene and here's a golden rule you should never attempt a vega versus chun li fight in the wake of the fight that they had in the street fighter animated movie Absolutely. but they attempt to they attempt to do such 
Yeah, uh, what, if there's one you... song they should be playing in a Street Fighter movie, it's not Ace Hood or Taboo. It's, K- it's, it's KMFDM. KMFDM. And absolutely, if the dude was, if it was a, what's the terms? It's stunt casting. Oh, it rhymes with that. Uh, if they did that, but with like, uh, it's the DJ from KMFDM, I'd be like, oh, mm. fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if he's like 50 years old and fat. I'm like, yeah, he's Vega. He's all right. He gets the pass <laughs> as long as we hear Ultra in the background. And you just, you just look at this version of Vega and literally black pajamas. A, a weird nails voice modulation, I think. It, he doesn't have a lot of lines. When he talks, it sounds like there's something going on. They're down pitching him. They're putting yeah. a warble. I don't know. Chun Li, you used to attack me in prison. Yeah, there's. You're, you're lucky there isn't a fence here I can climb. Um, this is this is what uh, this fight. This whole fight is like what a minute, minute fifteen seconds. Oh, absolutely. That, I mean, uh, of all the build up to this, or at least okay, let's see this fight. Vega finds Chun Li in a setting very similar to the early fight in the other alley. Like they just changed yeah, the camera yeah. position. Vega spins round like a scratched PlayStation One disc, as Chun Li ironically is the one who uses the cage to kick him away and knock off his mask really quickly. She tells him she'd wear a mask if she was that ugly, as it reveals a very decent-looking guy. <laughs> exactly. Jesus, that's harsh. She then throws spinning discs, which scar him. Rather like the buzzsaws from earlier, before she kills him and drapes him over a roof. I swear this was over quicker than the Zilla fight from Final Wars. At least that had a payoff, you know? At least that was a gag yes. versus this is just lame. I mean, I guess they knew that they couldn't outdo that animated fight. So, like, just make it short, you know? That's the only way we can get away with this. Because we, we have Vega in it. We have to have him fight her eventually. So, Chun-Li just, just runs off, I guess. And then uh, Nash and Lady Woman. Oh no, they're off the case. They were told, uh, drop the case. I'll have your gun and badge. And does that mean that we're not going to have any more scenes with them? No, oh. it doesn't. They're still in this film, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, sadly for us, no more Nash man boop boop <laughs> scenes until later on. Uh, oh, and then Bison and his SWAT bot easily stop Chun Li because she's right in the middle of the place. <laughs> they capture her instantly. <laughs> I, and by she's standing wearing... right in the middle of the bloody <laughs> thing. Like, wow, Bison's... how do we spot her? <laughs> He's wearing this sparkling white suit, and there's another tiger growl. <laughs> what is this? Is it supposed to be a bison? Like the animal like noise? I don't know. I think oh, they kind of that's move. probably it. It sounds like a jungle cat, though. But maybe that's what they're trying to go for. Um, so Chun Li is captured now. So Chun Li and Chun Li Dad are then reunited, and instead of like "I love you so much" or "How's the piano going," he goes, "I hate that you got yourself involved." Fuck you. Who hey, how'd the piano that? career take off? Oh, really successful. Cool. I'm glad you remembered me. <laughs> <laughs> He was told that, like, your daughter's alive. She is doing her piano. Here, here's a USB of her performance. Blah, blah, blah. So I know it's not like a shock. And he knew that she, you know, was was thriving, hopefully. So I get that. But why not, like, Chun-Li, like, oh, it's been so long. You're so, you grew up to be a woman. And then give out to her. That would have been fine. But, like, the fact that you start off by saying, oh, why did you come here? You should never have saved me. Like, come on, man. I've been I I was homeless for a month. Are you coming to see me? Does it to save me, or are you just having an existential crisis right now? Mm. You know? um, not sure. Should I stick with piano, or should I move on to harps? Bison re-enters the scene, and here we go. He delivers the only bit of dialogue that's worth really repeating. Your father has been the milk of my business, but even milk has an expiration date. Next snap, end scene. I mean, I didn't think too much of that line because it's really? like, milk of my business. That's not an expression. <laughs> Dude, this is like Oscar bait compared to everything else. He's the milk of my business, and I am the conflicts. Crunch, crunch, <laughs> next snap. I am the snap crackle pop <laughs> um bye bye pop which i know it's kayfabe right by right. killing chun lee's dad it wasn't just in the movie um or the guy film i should say but it's just like yeah i'm gonna do it in front of you and talk about milk <laughs> <laughs> then in classic- <laughs> knock knock who's there snap not your dad <laughs> uh, in classic james bond fashion the main villain 
and then the second in command villain leave the hero to a vague death she just i don't even want to just she just jumps around while swinging and they're like whoa whoa she's swinging <laughs> Bal yeah balrog is told to kill her so he of course leaves her alone with two grunts and you know this isn't a respectful uh proper version of street fighter because bison's guards aren't all attractive women and um, she <laughs> escapes by turning into one of the lamp puzzles from resident evil 8 she she escapes uh by uh balrog is about to shoot her idiot child <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait yeah this is so fucking funny <laughs> balrog tries to kill chin Li, but then a kid completely inexplicably runs in front of her and she jumps to save the kid even though balrog was trying to kill her and this causes the market sellers from before to rise up and unite to throw a watermelon at Balrog and then he runs away. Boo, we hate gun <laughs> violence. Boo, get out of here, Shadow Law. And he's, as he drives off, he goes, it's Shadow Law. And they're like, whatever. So she she's <sighs> shot in the shoulder. She <sighs> runs into oh, an of alley. Course. Her life bar is blinking red. Hey, here's Gen, who survived the massive explosion, who survived it. Shut up. Don't ask questions. Characters not dying when they should be dead. Wow, this really is a fighting game film. Uh, dodgy fireball effects return. And uh, what makes no sense is that Gen said you needed to throw away all anger and emotion to master this technique. But if anything, Chun-Li should be more pissed than ever. Saw her dad murdered in front of her. But now this seems to have calmed her down and it's increased her focus. And then she's well, just yeah, cut. we don't want we want Chun Li, not Shadow Lady. That's true. Oh, that's the Shadow Chun Li. Yeah, uh, thank you. So there's a That's there's, a deeper cut than the the one on her shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> We cut to a scene of someone drinking. You're like, who's it going to be? It only shows their their hand. It only shows their drink. And you're like, oh, is, is it going to be Bison? Is, is it going to be like uh, maybe Chun-Li's dad actually isn't dead? And the camera pans up and it's Nash. So Chun-Li then arrives in his house and they finally decide to do the thing you always knew that they're going to do, which is, oh, you hate Bison. That's crazy. I hate him too. Let's team up. Which hopefully will mercifully lead us to the final act, uh, which is kicked off with one of the most generic shootouts that I don't have anything written down for it. I've put uh, unexciting shooting on rails bit. <laughs> not, <laughs> in action, not Ghost seen squad. since 50 Cent, Blood on the Sun. No, it's like, uh, t no, no, Time Crisis is way too uh, exciting. Never mind, yeah, uh, strike that from the record. Should not compare this to Time Crisis. How dare uh, you? Even Crisis Zone was more exciting than this. <laughs> Chun Li stalks the waterfront area, and that there's that ship that that, that they can import things on because they got the politician to do something. Anyway, it ha it has the white rose, and then Chun Li finds a young girl. What? The white rose is Bison's daughter. Who would have the Balrog? <laughs> Balrog then drops, gets the drop on Gen, and another crap fight happens yeah uh with with childish insults like you're ugly you're slow your mom is fat um again yeah. again what does gen do he freezes or burns balrog's face with acid what happened uh i thought gen killed balrog with a pipe to the chest like commando but yeah. it looked more like command don't some of these lines read like alan sugar's jokes in the apprentice i'm sorry um I didn't like this fight because he Balrog doesn't rev his fist like Grand L. Bush in the Street Fighter <laughs> movie. Not. And did you know he retired from acting in 2003 to study medicine? Oh, uh, that's good he must for have him. gotten sick after watching this. And then, yeah, uh, I did also before that, Gen locks in a hold on Balrog, and Balrog doesn't know what to do because he's a boxer, which I thought was good psychology. Lol, I'm kidding. He's massive and flexes his way out. Bursts out of the hold easily. Yeah, and then he just goes, I'll just throw this pipe through you because I have, of course, got rid of all my emotion sensibilities so which allows me to kill you it's it's again this is balrog's big fight scenes like those last one and it's just it's again it's over in like a minute you know minute 15 and yeah he either gets a pipe stuck into him his face gets some weird cgi goop on it for one second and he just he's just gone from the film I've just put Bison beats up Gen, who really has no reason to be alive, apart from the fact mm. there's no other characters to heal Chun Li after the vicious bullet to the shoulder she took. That's his entire role done, so he's going to die any second now, I guess. Uh, Bison chases Nash, who has found Rose. 
and then Gen shows up again to lose, like well, Steve Blackman, whenever he wrestled Ken Shamrock. <laughs> the, the motherfucking... Gen, how did he appear in this room before Bison? Bison yeah, beat him in the doesn't other make room. Any sense. <laughs> and when Bison and Rose reunite, what what's what's the movie? What's happening? Okay, explain to me. Yeah. Does he love Rose? But I thought he had no conscience or soul. Does he want to kill right. her or reabsorb her? What 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 happened? Right, like in the the games, Rose is this character who can contain Bison's psycho power, I guess. So, Bison could change bodies or move his psycho power from body-body, I guess, but he only ever uses two. The really buff, freakish one and the skinny one where he's a bit sick in Street Fighter 2. <laughs> and that's it. Hey, like, how fucking boring is it to have a character like that? Or is it maybe just the fact that, you know, he's like that dude who he likes that one restaurant or takeaway near him, and that's all he wants to eat, and goes, no, nah, I don't eat anything else. I like this type. I think he was also trying to get all of his dolls. He wanted to, he wanted to put them, his soul, possibly in there. But then in Street Fighter Four, they changed it that he made a bunch of generic uh, bustle guy bodies like Abel and Seth and all those characters. I, I don't know. It, this oh, is weird right. Because... So it said it was just M. Bison is horny. Yes. And um, Bisons do have horns, I believe. <laughs> but here, it's not really explained. He wants her. He, he, he shipped her here. But he never says to Balrog's dead, so he has no one to explain the plan to for us to know what the plan is. Here comes Chun Li, who uses bamboo to spin yeah. around. And we get a half decent looking series of fighting next to a beautiful bamboo structure, a highlight mm -hmm. of many Bangkok's docks, or as I call them, Bang Dock. They fight a lot with the bamboo to really sell that this is the main event fight. Yeah. W one tiny thing before Bison got to this fight, he's walking from point A to point B and then just randomly kicks a guy's body and then just continues walking. <laughs> There's another animal roar. Yeah. Is it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're fighting with the bamboo, and and you know that eventually that the director's like, okay, we gotta put these stupid special moves into the fight now. I hate this shit. I don't want to do this. So after Chun Li throws Mr. Fuji's powder into Bison's face, uh, the climax is 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 the big special move, which. On my podcast, Triple KO, me and, and hey. Maximilian and Justin talked talked about this scene of Chun Li just swirling her arms around for what fifteen seconds, and then the the wobbly <laughs> fireball uh, knocks knocks Bison down, and he falls maybe ten feet oh. onto a bit of wood. Yes, the fireball was the thing to knock a dazed Bison off a ledge and to kill him. It wasn't really necessary. At that no. point, the finger poke of doom would have had the same effect. <laughs> You're right. But then Bison, who is dying after falling off the balcony and is everything splattered, he's like Trevelyan at the end of Gold Nine before the satellite lands on him, mm -hmm. looks over and sees his daughter, who, again, we've had no explanation really other than the fact that she exists. So gently jumps off the balcony. 10 feet down to snap Bison's neck with her legs. <laughs> it's okay. A, there's no crack. It's, it's, it's implied heavily that, that yeah, she snaps his neck, but in a movie, you have to have the crack sound effect, right? You don't right. really hear it. I think she botched this and they just filmed it <laughs> because it, she she jumps down legs first wraps her legs around his neck for like a half second then like does a flip downwards and lets go it's so weird and it happens really really fast i don't know what they're really going for like they're going for trying to have show her kill him and she also waits to make sure that rose can watch yeah, that's how I, I bloodthirsty she is they remember that Bison's supposed to be a bit Irish, so that's it. They did that deliberately. So the next bit is he looks his last words to his daughter as, Folks, where's the crack? And then he dies with his tongue <laughs> rolling out of his mouth like a carpet. But uh, it's just insane. Like, you think this would be the bit where he gives like a monologue where he goes, Now I realize I have led the wrong path down the alley. I hope you, my milk, <laughs> the milk for my loins, 
Well, so, but then it doesn't like something, and then he dies. Now I die. Uh, but no, <laughs> instead, Chun Li's just like, no, fuck you. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't write anything for this. We don't know really who she is. Fuck you. I don't care if you're dying. I'm yeah, going yeah. to double die you. I, I would have preferred that if he's trying to say something, but then she she does the neck snap or, or whatever. I also would have liked his, his dying promo to be like, continue, 10, oh. 9, 8, and then at 1, like, she kills him or something. Insert quarters. <laughs> uh, please insert 40 quarters. What a ripoff! Um, so it, there's a and Nash... And Tabu shows up to sing, you are dead, <laughs> Street dead, Fighter, dead. Street Fighter. <laughs> This is going in the trailer, trailer. <laughs> There's another Nash scene, but I'm skipping over that. So let's just go. Oh, into... wait, wait, quick, quickly, though. I'll, <laughs> I'll bring it up. I know you want. I'll bring you back in. I'm sorry. Okay. Nash is like, yeah, that was awesome. But you're a badass. You'd better run, though. You still have a chance of mainstream success. I don't. I'll stay here and <laughs> fend them off. It's me, Charlie Nash. I'm with Interpol. <laughs> yeah. This isn't like that. Like, we don't care. We're going to shoot you, you know. <laughs> I'm with Interpol. So so it goes into another melodramatic narration oh. where they then sequel but like how how could you have thought we let's sequel bait No 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 you, again you, how dare you miss out the other Nash scene Nash is back at the water cooler talking about the game last night and then far far cry blood dragon is like leave me alone you creep and that's it for him <laughs> pretty much so then Chun Li goes to the grave to talk about the Order of the Web being something worth fighting for. Which is what, what exactly? It was helping out poor people, inspiring them to throw uh, tomatoes at Balrog. Yeah, yeah. Where where are they right now? Back at, you know, They're the big poor. house. The big house where people are fucking in the back as we speak because <laughs> they couldn't get the, the, the time schedule issue. Whatever, don't think about it too much. Yeah, now we're back at Cap Shea Rich. Uh, yeah, all those poor people could fuck right off, I guess. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm done. I'm done helping them. Uh, so Gen shows up and he goes, "We need to start recruiting oh. for the sequel." Yeah, Gen's here. He's, uh, he's Gen fine. Just, just came back with her because he's like, "Well, I'll do the work. I'll do the porn." <laughs> <laughs> whatever, it's not a ball come at nine. Yeah, whatever, sure. So we need to start recruiting for the next Street Fighter tournament. And he says, <laughs> he says, this smells like an old friend. And then she's like, well, I killed Bison. And he goes, oh, and shrugs it like, <laughs> okay. No, he's dead though, for real. Unless they are trying to do the Bison clone thing or Rose somehow is, I don't know what they're going for. I would love to, to talk to the writer saying, what was the plan going forward? Um, Gen then says Ryu wrong and says Ryu, even though it's been corrected for like a decade now. Again, Capcom had more creative control. No, say Ryu. Probably because they think most Americans still assume it's Ryu. They're like, no, yeah. if you say Ryu, they're going to be like, he said it wrong and start throwing things at the screen if they hadn't you know, already, <clears throat> already started. Like like the the Bangkok rioters, I guess. But uh, I, I'll give them that, to be honest with you, because uh, I still say Zangief, even on Street Fighter 4. They're quite clearly saying Zangief. I do say Kiev. Zangief too. I, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's Robin, true. Robin Shu gets this one. You okay. get a free porn scene after this while well, the lighting's still good. <laughs> Gen says, do you want to do more movies? And Chun-Li, Chun-Li says, No. Cut to credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a lad called Rio of Shadow Low <laughs> who's a force to be reckoned with. I'm like, oh, they're doing the thing that they did at the end. You ever see Red Dragon? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously like, what is her name? Yeah. yeah. Dr. Children's like, oh, Hannibal. There's a detective named Sterling here. Do you want to see her? I'll tell her you're busy. I told her no. What's her name? (laughs) And it just comes up in text. It's a prequel. Uh, Yeah, but have you ever seen the end of a movie where they say, hey, like, do you want to go on another adventure? And your main character says, no. Credits. (laughs) This is the worst fighting game movie I've ever seen. I think I think it's the worst. It It might not be the worst video game movie I've ever seen. I think there probably is something worse. I am off the top of my head and do you know why i think you know what? why because it's not fun it's and it's not stupid enough at all king of fighters like i think our recording for that is was three hours long the uncut version because we're yeah, laughing we have to cut out so- all the crying yeah yeah <laughs> We're laughing so much, and Tekken is more on the side of like that's decent. It's not great, but that's decent. And this is just that four out of ten 
five out of ten. So much of it is just because you're just you're just bored. There's just nothing going on. There's no one saying anything particularly clever or funny. The fights are boring. Like that's why I'm looking for nuggets like, oh, he's my milk. I'm going to milk him. And crack. Yeah, you think and that's the, the best bit yeah. of the film? It's, 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 it says a lot. And, and, yeah, and you are right. Street Fighter. That's it. You're watching the film right now. Street Fighter. Uh, you're right. It's. I think you and other people and YouTubers have said it over the years. If mm. you're going to be bad, then be terrible. Yeah, Don't yeah. be mid. So you're right. King of the Fighters was a hundred times worse than this, but once you cross that threshold into being complete dog poo, oh, it's great! You least watch this and go, this film's rubbish, all right. Uh, the only, you know, nice part of this story is how big of a financial failure this really was. This opened up at number nine, at, like, after wow. its first weekend. It lost money and had number nine in the title. If Ifune strikes again! Again! <laughs> 1.5 million dollars uh it only made 12 million dollars worldwide against a budget of 50 this cost 50 there's no million way dollars that's what it's that's that's the number i f i found i don't believe it wow but that's the number i i found is that in bison dollars no yes I don't know what their market value is anymore. As we stated before, the Van Damme live action movie from 94 did post a profit just based on, you know, just theater gross alone. Uh, so it shouldn't be no surprise that Capcom and Hyde Park's relationship was supposed to be multiple movies wound up being just this one. This was like their other like three pronged attack for Street Fighter 4. Like, let's let's have a movie in the theaters as well, you know? Um, yeah, sure. Why not? So, so yeah, like uh, you know, a massive failure. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I keep doing this to you, Matthew, making you watch these. Oh, it's fine. Who else would I, I would? If everybody else says like, "Hey, you want to watch this?" <laughs> 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 like, no. But it's like my muscles. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, to look at the positive side of things, yeah. at least they were fighting in streets. That's I'll true. give them that. That's one thing that people became that a popular meme, I guess, uh, last year and a few years ago, where it's like, there's not a lot of actual fighting in streets in the games. All right, well done. If you're really into that type of thing, fantastic. If you are also into that, may I recommend World Star Hip Hop as well? Loads of them on there. <laughs> um, Neil McDonough uh, was the, uh, easy to highlight of this film. I Playing think an so, absolute yeah. nutter. He's just absolutely off his head in this role with this he, character he the limited stuff it he's given more, though it could be approaching you know super memorable meme cult movie status if he had turned it up like a like a few more notches he's almost there but it's it's just a uh, milk uh to right be right like you, super, you do need a bit memorable. of campness for a truly memorable yeah. bison role either raul julia or of course the legendary moment in the street fighter cartoon where Cammy goes, you killed my father. And then Chun-Li also goes, you killed my father. And Bison goes, yes, 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 I killed your father. What is it with you and your <laughs> women and your fathers do? I killed my father too. You don't hear me whining about it. Any other final thoughts on it? Uh, no. <laughs> the end. I'm still thinking about the glass window in the toilet. <laughs> That's just, imagine you're at the club insomnia and you're having a good time and you mm -hmm. go out to the powder room, you know, do your business, you look over, you just see just everything in a way you don't <laughs> want to see. I would never go to that club again. That's fair. You know, I think that sums up my thoughts and reviews <laughs> Toilet. of this poorly written, poorly put together, <laughs> inexplicably developed. Uh, make like the Steven Seagal's wounds and exit. Exit. <laughs> <laughs> For those that are not familiar with all things uh, Bocce and Bochamania, ask where can they find you, Matthew? You can find me on the YouTube. Uh, Bochamania, again, is the current channel. It's probably be taken down by the time this comes out, but oh, oh well, c'est la vie. Um, I can be fine there. I, I also like to stream uh, wrestling autobiographies. Right now I'm reading Bret Hart's book, which is the most Bret Hart book to ever be written. There must be a lot of complaining in it. Lots of complaining. He hates is family and he loves shagging other people's wives i love bret hart uh thanks once again uh possibly dead or alive in the future you need to bone up on on dead or alive material though well dead or alive and bone up often use the same sentence that won't be too hard there you um, go and also there is that tekken 2 movie there's there's still that there's always still that Select and make your first pick. Skin it on now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Skin it on now. Choose and pick the best one. Skin it on now. Five, four, three, two, one. Skin it on now. Select and make your first pick. Skin it on now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Skin it on now.
yeah. Choose and pick the best one. Let's get it on now. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get it on now. Select and make the first pick. Let's get it on now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. We await your return, warrior.